Hey, what's happening? Hey, look, we drove down to Huntington Beach to hook up with a new friend of mine. His name is Matt. He's fast as hell. He's so fast. And he has this dope BMW. And he has this garage that he's been telling me about that I hadn't seen. So I'm down here to check it out. Um, and this brother's dope. You guys got to meet him. He do, if you love cars, you love going fast, you love grinding and hustling and getting good at stuff, you want to meet my man Matt. So come on in. Let's check him out. So this is my boy Matt, one of the owners here of Corsa, dope ass garage, and he has this the craziest M2, and he's super, super fast. So Matt, was that? <laughs> M4. 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 He had the M4. What am I saying? See, I'm so stuck on the M2. You're stuck on your M2. I'm stuck on my M2, but he has the M4. So, hey man, tell us about your garage and what you do. All right, so we do a lot of, we started as vinyl wrap, and we do a lot of like PPF and customization. But as of recently, we wanted to expand more into service and aftermarket performance and getting a lot more of these uh, European and higher end cars on the track and just kind of providing a proof of concept that you can have a nice car, you can have it look good and you can make it go fast and learn how to drive fast at the same time. So that's why we built the M4 and it's uh, Project Corsa M4 on Instagram if you guys want to follow it. We have a build thread on Beamer Post as well, showing the entire build from start to finish and we're not even close to finish but I mean, so far it's been the, one of the best cars I've ever driven and the entire build has been a blast. I got to meet Todd here. Um, looking forward to building his M2 and both are going fast. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Let's this do it. Awesome. Yeah. Right off the bat, he makes like a hundred horsepower. So we tuned the uh, transmission to kind of clamp faster, and then we made a stage two boot mod. Through. Well, you want to build like a story, right? Not just take a car and just like bang on it and smack it. You want to actually like develop the car, add parts to it, let people know like, oh, this change, the car turns in better, the braking is significantly better, the power draw, or the power delivery is smoother, stuff like that exactly what I'm trying to do, but M2C is like the perfect chassis. And consumables aren't super expensive, like these brake pads probably last me five to seven days or three hundred Cars are a little heavy, so I mean, they won't go through tires as much as like the Viper or stuff like that, but it's still, it's still significantly cheaper. It's like $900,000 set for $600. $900? Yeah. How much? $1,000. So how long does that last? Depends. Like, like it depends. The bone level, how long okay, that? so two different things with tires. Uh, tires, heat cycle. You can have full tread, but if you overheat cycle them, what that means is once you reach optimal temperature, it'll start to degrade the chemical inside and put drink in the tire. So you can laugh on them all day and it'll degrade the tire faster. But if you kind of go up to the heat cycle, then cool down, and then go for another hot lap, that's how you can do it. So how do you know? Hold it here for a second. Yeah, yeah. You have a pyrometer, you bring it in, you shoot the tire, you shoot the middle, you shoot the outside. If you shoot the inside and it's hotter, that means it's overinflated. How about if I built like the M2 and then like I threw an e-brake in yeah. so that I could drill like the high stuff? Yeah, how do you do that? Yeah, we can do that, and I'm not gonna lose any performance, that's not gonna impact yeah. it at all. All you do is throw on uh, the hydro, you wire it to another caliper in the rear, and that locks up the rear when you wanna drift it. Yeah. To be honest, you don't even need a hydro. Why not? Weight kind of for the car? Get no, no, I know you can't. I mean, obviously, yeah. Oh, but you yeah. just want to. I mean, it's something cool. Yeah. <laughs> not only is it cool, I think like certain types of turns, like it helps, right? Like if you're doing a hairpin, Turn. For I for time attack, like tracking, no. Track, but for, for drifting, track. yes. Drifting. And then if you want to maintain the angle, you just keep yeah, yanking yeah, the yeah, yeah. Yeah. stuff like that. But at that point, um, but I can build a time attack car. You can help me build a time attack car 
that I can also go drift in. Absolutely. Absolutely. The main thing that's going to change is alignment. That's the only thing that's going to change. We can set the alignment up for fast lap times or we can set the alignment up for drifting. Hmm. But how do you set that up? Do you set that up on the flat, out at the track? Or? No, we set the car up before it goes out. So obviously, if you're going to go out and do like a normal track, we would want to set up so you get the fastest lap times possible. If you're going to go out for drifting, then we can set the car a little more aggressive to get to slide more. But if you want to drift at the end of a track day, I mean, you still be able to drift with no problem. Mm -hmm. That's when you start getting into like the fine tuning and stuff like that. Did you do a complete color change on this? I wrapped it. Yeah, but did you do that inside and all that stuff? No, I didn't. I, didn't. Just I thought it would get more messed up, but I mean, it's been holding up pretty well on track. And tell me about these rims that you have. Like what, the uh, tires. The, the, uh, the tires or the wheels? The, the wheels. The okay, wheels. these are actually Japanese wheels. A lot of people don't like running Japanese wheels on, uh, on like, German cars, but I'm a Honda guy, so yeah, yeah, I like my Japanese shit. Um, these are forged. I would definitely go with something that's forged because I, I jumped this car, I jumped on it last time so hard that when it came down, the differential hit the floor. And the wheels are still fine. So like, the way I, I drive the car pretty aggressively, I drop wheels and stuff like that, so last thing I want is like a wheel failure on track. Yeah. So spend the money and get some good wheels. Yeah, for sure. I want to build one like this. Yeah. You know, because your car looks so fucking dope. They just got to trade it. Some old lady, this car is a 2015 that had 15,000 miles. He checked it out, no accidents, nothing like that. I was like, cool, put it on a truck, let's buy it. I think you're going to have, as weird as it sounds, a lot more fun with the BMW than all your exotic. Yeah. 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 You're gonna get to enjoy it. Yeah. And you're not gonna it's be scared if you like it's less consequence. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> it's yeah, less yeah. consequence. It's of suspension. course I wanted to look, you know, even better than yeah. yours. I mean that's like yeah. crazy. Uh, How am I gonna look dude? I'm gonna have to find someone else if that's the case, because we could team up. I don't know about better than no, just kidding. <laughs> so this car for example, I have probably like twenty-five thousand in aftermarket mm -hmm. cars. But the suspension alone was like eight grand. Mm -hmm. I wanted the best suspension. Right. So we did that. Um, a lot of the fabrication I had to go into it. The roll cage is like two grand. The wheels are like three grand. So I mean, stuff adds up quick. Dang it. Yeah. And like the wing, actually, they don't make those wings for this car. So I bought the, the base off the GTR and then I custom made all the... But do you know that that wing is actually working? Oh, are you kidding me? That wing, that wing and the aero setup is probably good for not even long, probably at least like three or four seconds. Get the fuck out of here. I swear to God. Get the fuck out of here. Go. That's why the car is on stock power, but the aero is what makes it go fast. The aero, the suspension, the wheels and tires, and we haven't even set up the suspension yet. You haven't even tuned it. I did tune it, but then I started running into issues, and I was like, wait a second. There's like a million of these tuned, and I got tuned by like quote unquote the best S55, which is this engine tuner. But it was great on the street. It made a ton of power. The moment I went to the track, it would go into limp mode. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I'm like, you know what? I don't think there's enough people out there tracking these motors, putting it under the conditions that it's seeing on track. Because you can tune a car to make as much horsepower as possible, but what about like 70%? What about when it hits higher temperatures, cooling temperatures, oil temperatures? It's going to go into fail safe. So I was like, all right, let's revert back to stock. Let's address all the issues of what could be causing this and then start adding power. So I want to maximize the stock power first. So I did go tune, but I took the tune off. And then I added all the cooling and stuff like that. But it doesn't need any more power right now. It doesn't. Right. Let's do something fucking As if it were to be my bone build. Yeah. yeah. Like, and, and I want it, like, I'm okay with paying that much for a suspension. Why? Because it's you. Yeah. And you are, like, you know, one of the fastest drivers I know, oh, right? And you. you drive this car. Yeah. And you drive for real it's not yeah. like every once in a while you drive you yeah. drive all the time so for me i would be comfortable with you going look this is the suspension that i'll put in my car and here's why mm -hmm. right gotcha. now if you said well there's another suspension you would have put in but it was a money thing that i'd like to talk about yeah what's the difference was it worth the right. the difference in right. price and why and stuff right, like right, that? Right. yeah because right. so, if it's something better then i'm interested yeah. right and then the other thing about it is because I know you, you can also test on my car. Exactly. You know what I mean? You can yeah. take my car and be like, oh, this is what I see. Mm -hmm. So you can do it slightly different yeah. just to kind of figure out, you know, exactly. the, the only big, the only problem is, is how do you deal with the seats 
Because your seats are probably set up in your car. You can't move them, right? You can move them. Oh, okay. So you, you'd be able to drive my car, too. You can move them. But then it would be like... I would address that first, to be honest. I would do the safety first, man. Of course. Because like, you, you know why they have these... Uh, these on the side, right? You know why they have the, the halo? Yeah, I'm talking. Okay. So what the halo is, and Brandon, I hope it never happens, but it's good to have. If you ever get into a rollover and you have your helmet on, you got to think of your helmet like you're adding another five pounds to your head. Now you have a bowling ball for your neck to support. If you get into a side impact or you get into a rollover, your, your head's going to be flying with that, with that helmet on. So this limits the degrees of travel that your head can go. Got it, got it. And then a Hans device. I can still do a Hans device with this, right? It's exactly. So you want to com combine this with a Hans device. Basically, the Hans device, it straps, it hooks up to your helmet, and then the harness holds it down. And what it does is it limits how far your head can travel forward mm -hmm. in a front collision. So you want to protect yourself front and side collision. And that, literally those two things alone save lives. You gotta think you hit the car, you hit the wall sideways. So, boom, at 80 miles per hour, 80 to zero. That's not how fast we're going, it's how fast we stop. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's when shit happens. <laughs> you don't need to start with a full cage. I would just start with a half cage. To be honest. And then, as I use it, go to yeah, exactly. 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 And then you can only sell off the, the used part for close to what you buy for. Anyway. With like a hundred grand budget, you can build a sick ass, fully like decked out M2 car. It doesn't even have to touch a hundred grand though, like I'm saying. This suspension costs eight grand, you can get suspension that costs 12 grand. Yeah. Which is like the motorsport. And they have a couple more degrees of adjustment. Would space. you get that? Why, why didn't you get that? Why didn't I get that? One, it was a money thing. And two, the fourth level of adjustment, I didn't have enough knowledge on personally yet. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be able to use it. Oh, okay. Yes. So I want to learn with the three way first. Tell me how you adjust this. So basically, this is low speed compression. Low speed compression is basically at low speed, how much you want the shock to let the how fast yeah. you want it to, to compress. Then you have high speed compression. High speed compression is say like Riverside, bus stop. When you're going over berms, how fast you want it to compress. Now you have rebound. Rebound is how fast you want the shock to push the wheel back into the ground. So then you set the car up for all the low speed and the high speed sections and dial it in. Say like I'm going over bus stop, right? And I hit the berm and the car jumps. I'm like, okay, I definitely need to soften it up a little bit so I can eat that bump a little bit better. But if I'm going through a slower corner like button hook where it's second gear and the car starts hopping, then I need to make adjustments in low speed. So data will tell us all of that. Do you have the data, do you have that hooked up in this? Oh, all you need to do is a lap timer and then plug it into the car. And then it shows you sector by sector, it's a graph. And it just shows you, okay. Uh, so you don't need to buy like a data system, what do you call it? Uh, it's called a data logger. But um, the lap timer that I have, it shows me my lap times as I'm going around the track. And I hook it up to the OBD2. So then it pulls all the information from the car. All the details. All the details. And then when, we, when you go off track, you go onto a laptop, pull it up, okay, like how was that lap? How was first lap compared to, compared to lap four? Why did I go faster than that point? Well, in the first sector, I was two seconds faster, but I went slower. And yeah. so the other suspension system is like, this is 9,000 or 8,000, right? The other one is 12. You get around like 12, yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. And okay. then what is that going to be here as well? You put it anywhere. You put it anywhere you want. But uh, this was, I figured out this was the best spot for my car, so I put it there. And, and what's the other component? You said there's four pieces. Yeah, so there's four ways. I believe four way is low speed rebound because this has rebound, but you can't adjust the high speed and low speed differently. But I, if I got that, I'd just be opening up a can of worms because I would not know how to adjust all four. Yeah, yeah. Well, definitely, if you don't know how to, I'm not going to yeah. Well, I'll figure out how, but yeah. let me, I mean, figure, but like let me figure out these first. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So we're saying this would work for me right now. Oh, this would be plenty. You don't even need these. You can get the two ways and you'll still be going fast. Yeah. Two ways are like five grand. You don't even need those. You just want a good shot, a good brand, because the value on the inside is what matters. I'm gonna hitch to this guy's wagon. We'll get faster. We'll get faster, bro. We'll get faster. We'll get faster, man. We will. I promise you. And and so this right now, you have this target for what speed on um, button? I want to do a one minute for you. I want to go under the one minute fifty. Because last time we did a one fifty two. So we'll see. I still got a lot of dialing in to do, but 
I think you could do it. I think you could do it. I really think you can. The one thing I like about yours is just in photos, it just pops. Yeah, it's like a yellow. It looks good, yeah. You guys do delivery stuff and design it, or do I have to come with a design? We would have a designer. We have a designer, designer? Yeah. What do you mean differently? Like, to make this car faster, better on the track. To make it faster, I mean, I think it has all the all the basic parts that it needs, suspension, wheels, tires, and um, most importantly, safety. But for now, I'm gonna leave the power level basically at stock. I wanna maximize that, go through all the issues, make sure this car's not getting hot and stuff like that. Aside from that, um, I would just increase aero. So what I wanna do is I wanna make carbon fenders. I don't like the GT4, slightly wider, but I want it vented. And I'm gonna, what? I want it vented. And then I'm gonna cut the hood and do hood vents as well. Because not only does that help the engine cool, but all the air that gets trapped under it has somewhere to release and increases downforce. And it sucks the car down to the helping the splitter. But yeah, I think I want to make a bigger, a bigger carbon splitter. So what you're saying is, build it as I go. That's really what you're saying. Do like the, do the necessities first. But if you're going to do the necessities, get the good necessities. Yeah. Like, don't fuck around with cheap shocks. Get good shocks. Get good wheels. Good brakes. Sort all that out. Make sure the car's reliable and that the car can drive consistently. Because you don't want a car that goes out and if the brakes overheat or the tires are overheating or the suspension's not keeping up and now you gotta adjust your job. You want the car to be consistent so that you can be consistent. But and you and, and the M2 is okay to do the same. Oh yeah. I mean you're doing it on M4. Yeah. I, if I could have chose, I would have done it on M2. Yeah. But this is over my budget. Yeah.